Hello everyone, today I'm going to try out a Rust application that's currently being promoted as solving the apparent Python packaging and app distribution problem. The claim is that the program will create a single file executable that can be used on a variety of operating systems. I'll post a link to the article in the video description below. My experience and first impressions coming up next. <laughs> start installing the program, I should say there's a lot of programs that can create a single file executable. In fact, most of the popular ones can, but to the author's credit, they've actually posted a fairly good comparison of their program to a lot of others currently available on the market, and they've given kudos to those programs when warranted. As far as something unique that Pyoxidizer brings to the table, it seems to be mainly these two claims, that it's cross-platform compatible, and that it produces significantly faster load times. Now on to the install. The first thing that you need to know is that Pyoxidizer is a Rust application. In fact, that's the very first thing they tell you on the getting started section. I'm just being honest, that's a strike for me. I'm not a Rust programmer. I don't really have a desire to be a Rust programmer. So installing Rust on my machine just so I can use a program that creates executable files seems like a bit of a waste to me, but let's continue. You'll need to navigate to www.rust-lang.org in order to download the installer. I'm going to use the recommended Rust up installation. I've actually downloaded the file already, so I'm going to go ahead and run that now. Type in Y to continue, then type 1 to proceed with the installation. Next, I'm going to fast forward this install so I don't bore you to death. To install the Pyoxidizer application itself, we're going to use the command cargo install pyoxidizer from the command prompt. Let's go ahead and fast forward. Okay, I've hit a build error. If I look up at the notes, it appears that pyoxidizer needs Visual Studio 2013, 15, or 17 installed with the Visual C++ options. Okay, fine, not a big deal. Let's go and see what's involved in getting this. Two hours later. After a little research, I was able to find what I needed, the build tools for Visual Studio 2019. I'll put a link to this in the video description. I've downloaded it already, so let's go ahead and install the program. The installer is up and running, and I see the C++ tools, and check that, wow, 4.5 gigabytes. Yikes, and we haven't installed Pyoxidizer yet, and I've already installed Rust in a 4.5 gigabyte Visual Studio build kit. Okay, let's fast forward. Now that the builder tools have installed, I should be able to install Pyoxidizer successfully. What I'm going to do now is to walk you through a very simple example of creating an executable from a Py file. Please note that this in no way demonstrates the full potential of Pyoxidizer, but it's meant to show you the general workflow. There's a lot of additional options available to you, um, but they'll mostly be variations on this same process. The first thing I'm going to do is navigate to the Pyoxidizer folder I've created on my desktop. It's got some of the files I've downloaded to install the program and the sample script I created to test the project. Click in the address bar, then type CMD, then press enter. This will open up the, the command prompt in this directory. Next type Pyoxidizer init pyapp, or whatever the name is of your application. The application is going to be called pyapp, and, and this is going to initialize the project and create everything that I need to build the executable. Next, I'm going to open up the folder in Visual Studio Code. Here you can see the PyApp folder that was created by a Pyoxidizer, as well as a lot of other project files. The most important file in here, other than the script itself, is the file pyoxidizer.toml. This is where I'm going to adjust the settings for this project. There's a lot of different options here, but they mostly come down to setting up where the Python distribution is, which libraries or packages you want to import, and how you want the file to be executed in Python when it's run. There's only a few things that we're going to change today. First is I need to tell Pyoxidizer that I'm going to use a local Py file. So I'm going to give the path and then tell it what file I'm going to import. Well, so now that the script is up, you can see that I'm simply gathering some inputs from the user and then printing a simple response, nothing fancy, but it should tell me whether this program will actually work. Now I'm going to paste the path into the string here. Make sure that you reverse the backslashes, otherwise they will be interpreted as escape characters. You could technically escape the escape character, but that just looks messy. 
Next, I'm going to adjust how the file runs. By default, the file will run in an act interactive Python interpreter, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, but I don't want this for this project. I'm going to comment out that line. One nice thing about this file is that it comes stocked with a bunch of canned options that you can use or not use. It helps you figure out what's available with this program. I do like that. For this example, I'm going to import and run the Python script that I set up. So I'm going to uncomment that line and enter my file name as the module. <laughs> Next, open up the terminal. If you're in Visual Studio, you can press Control plus the backtick mark and then type in pyoxidizer build. <laughs> Except, make sure you're in the right folder. It looks like I opened up the wrong folder in Visual Studio Code. I need to actually be in the PyApp folder. Okay, let's try that again. PyOxidizer is now compiling the executable file. Now that the file is complete, I'm going to open it up in the File Explorer and run the program in Command Prompt. I could also double-click the file and run it, but if there's errors, it will shut down immediately, and I won't be able to see the error message. So I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way in the Command Prompt. Okay, so I was able to successfully create an executable file with Pyoxidizer. As for the claims of cross-platform compatibility, I'm not really able to test that, but here's my first impressions. For a hobbyist, a non-Rust programmer who isn't really concerned about cross-platform distribution or speed of load times, there's really a lot of overhead here just to create an executable file. Having to install Rust in a 4 gig Visual Studio Builder Kit just to install the actual program itself just seems like way too much overhead for the benefit that I'm getting personally. However, if you're a Rust programmer or load times or cross-platform compatibility are a big deal for you, then this is definitely worth checking out. It just works as they say. I'll put links in the video description to all the sites and programs that I've shown you today. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the program, especially if you're a hobbyist like me. If you enjoy this video, let me know by smashing that like button and subscribe for future content. Talk to you later.